The Supercharged Links plugin in Obsidian. I've been getting a lot of questions about this over time, especially with exactly how to configure this and set it up the way that I have it and the way that I use it. Now, there are specific reasons why I set up certain things the way that I did, and I'm going to tell you what those are, why, and how to do exactly what I did. Want to get the latest releases of my Obsidian template vault and all of the work that I do in Obsidian, including the latest updates to my custom theme and CSS, supporting me on GitHub sponsors at any recurring tier for any of those amounts? We'll get you private access to the GitHub repository where all of my updates, everything from my template vault is updated in near real time with constant updates, tag releases, and helpful documentation, tutorials, and other content specifically for sponsors only. Want to report issues that you find and have them resolved swiftly? Or just talk and have discussions about what you may have found or what you might have questions about in the template vault and get priori prioritized responses from me? And becoming a sponsor of my template repository will get you all of this and more. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. So what does Supercharged Links do? What does it look like? How do I use it? So when you see my like my links inside of my vault, you can see that the actual name of the link is what they've always been for me, where they have a special symbol, the date I've completed them, specifically for my inputs. Like I only use supercharged links for my input notes or research notes, literature notes, whatever you want to call them. So like I consume a piece of media, an article, a paper, a video, a podcast, etc. Supercharged links is what I then apply to these files. So we have the symbol for the type of input it is, the date stamp of when I completed that that item, and then the title of the item. So for instance, this one is a uh, article from 2020 when I finished it on how to write an academic paper. So I completed reading this and processing it in 2020, and now it has a uh, newspaper emoji and a green square. Now, if you've looked at my tag taxonomy note before, tag taxonomy, then you can see on here that I have, okay, I have different color squares and different emojis here. So we can see that this is an article that I have completed. That's, you know, why it has those icons. But supercharged links is what actually adds these here, even though the name of the note does not include the emojis, because I've had issues by having emojis actually in the text title of notes when it syncs between different machines. Specifically, Windows really hates it. So that's why these things are not actually in the names of the notes. Plus, uh, having metadata is usually a better way of approaching some of these problems. So if I actually went to the uh, actual note, we can see that the tag has uh, the inbox emoji, nested tag for articles, nested tag for green square. Now this is just for tags. This has nothing to do with supercharged links yet. Supercharged links only cares about the two pieces of metadata that are now properties or YAML metadata that's still YAML ultimately but type and status. These two separate pieces are what supercharged links actually looks at and cares about. And this is what I'm going to focus on. Now, if I open up supercharged links, and if you want to set this up and do it all yourself as well, you can go to browse on the community plugins and supercharged links, you should find it. It's a pretty popular one. It's got 74,000.6, whatever. So if we go to the actual plugin, there are some options. Now looking at the options, this is where those two pieces of metadata come into play. Type and status. These are the front matter attributes I am targeting. Now that's all I've done, and then I have everything else is selected as defaults, and uh, I believe you also might need to have the style settings plugin installed as a dependency for supercharged links. I don't actually use this plugin for supercharged links. It might be a dependency, but I don't actually use this plugin for what most might use it with supercharged links. Because if I did actually use that plugin, what would happen is inside of supercharged links, the actual configuration uh, menu for the plugin, you would then create a new selector. You'd say, I want the attribute value of the type, not status, because there's two things you're putting in this box back here. So which attributes of the two that we're targeting are we writing a rule for? I wanna look at the value for the type attribute. And if that type attribute is say a tweet, um, actually, let's change it to article so we can keep on the same file. It needs to be an exact match, none of that, and I'm going to basically say I want to add content before the link, and that's my rule. Nice. Okay. So now I have that type, uh, the type attribute with the value of article, and now what do I do? If I go to style settings, now supercharged links is available here. If the type of note is article, then prepend what? So I'm going to add 
the newspaper emoji because, hey, it was of type article. So we're going to add the article emoji that I say for that. So let's do that. So now with this style setting set for supercharged links, I can leave this menu. I can go and find this article back in my timeline note and we can see, okay, there we go. There it is. So, but is that from the actual uh, plugin or is that from my CSS? Because I actually do this through CSS. So I actually have to deactivate this, save that, going back. Ah, so if I don't have CSS overriding the rule, and I, you know, let's just say I don't have any CSS going for this, then supercharged links, you know, will then add that emoji there. So let's actually just make this easy and comment out everything. So now only the articles have the actual piece of metadata there uh, attached to the name of the actual file. So let's continue on, okay? So if we go back to supercharged links, all right, we got type, and now I need status for the articles. So we're going to go to status, and the absolute value is I want a green square, because that's what I'm actually using is a green square. It needs to be an exact match. And we're just going to prepend some information, save, and let's change it to supercharged links. If the status is a green square, then we're going to add a green square. Nice. So then if we leave and why is it not working? So this is exactly why I do it through CSS. Because if you have one rule that appears correct, then it overrides the other. You could only then have one. And so this by itself might not be an issue because what you could do is say supercharged links and then you make every combination. So I have a newspaper and then all the different colors of squares that I have, that would be each of these rules. Oh, well, mm, no, because it only works based on one particular uh, attribute here from the in the ML metadata. Okay, well, what if I did a tag? And can I separate it out by tag? Yes, you can. So if you did it for each tag, and the tag would actually have to be uh, the actual um, inbox, it would be article and a green square. And I could say, okay, if it has this tag, then add article and green square. But the issue with this becomes then you have to do it for every single unique combination. And now you have a lot of rules and maybe this might work for you. Then you have it all done with menus instead of any sort of code. And that could per be perfectly valid. That could work for you. That doesn't work for me. I just didn't care for that, didn't prefer it. So I don't do that. Instead, I rely on CSS. So if I undo that commenting, and so now we could see inside my CSS, and I got this from a Discord somewhere in the Obsidian Discord ages ago, this is essentially what happens. So if I really zoom in here, um, if you've had access to my CSS uh, from my template file uh, or my template vault, then it's gonna be at the moment of this filming, 2.9.3 is where it's located at. But uh, for each link, if it has a particular link type, then it's going to say, okay, I found the video links because the text for type says video in the YAML metadata or properties. And then before the content of the file's name, if it would stop doing stuff, uh, it would then add the actual emoji for the different type of input that it, that it is. So in this case, uh, it would add article for the newspaper emoji right here. And then it adds the attribute of link status. So this is just another way of doing it. You could do it either way with success, but this just seemed better for me because this way, I know it's always it's always gonna be one of those input types, but then the status could change. And instead of making a unique combination of every single you know potential outcome, I add a new color you know emoji square for a different status or something, then I have to make one of those rules for every single type of input that I have, which is like, what, seven or something right now? It's just easier just to do code. In this way, it's just saying, hey, add that emoji, add a space, add the other emoji, add a space, and then you get the name of the link. So by having the theme set up like this, I then have the link and all the stuff before the link. So my setup of supercharged links is a combination of have the plugin, have the dependency for the plugin, and then use CSS to dynamically build the content that is added to the beginning of the link. And ultimately, why am I doing this? Why am I adding this? Just because, well, one, doing this stuff is fun. 
but two, it adds that metadata to the beginning of the name of the file. So I can at a glance see where it's at. I mean, if I didn't already see the symbol, and I've talked about the symbols before in the past, but by having that symbol there, I can open up like the search dialog. I can say, okay, article, because that's the paren symbol. I want to know when did I finish that article? I remember it was something about 2020 and it was related to academia. Oh, there it is, how to write an academic paper. And so with that, I optimize for search using the symbols. But at a glance, that doesn't tell me like, did I ever actually finish processing that article? Or like maybe I forgot what the symbol is or something. But by looking at the name of the note in this way, I can just say, oh, here's a pictorial representation of what type of note this is. I can see the newspaper. I know for me that that means article. And then I can see the color of the square. And I know that green means I'm done. It's completed. I have finished processing that particular note and anything related to it. So at a glance, I can just see what it is, where it is in the stage of processing with no overhead, nothing to deal with it. If I update a notes and I say it was a different color and I have now finished it, I can just update that, met that metadata piece uh, in the properties to be a green square now. And so one thing I like about properties now is that if I went to something and I want to update the property of status, I can just backspace and bam, there's all the different colors. I don't even have to you know, do anything where I have to, you know, add shortcuts or type things out because now the way the properties works, I just select which one I need. And eventually at the end of the day, now with like data view queries, I could order things by type. I can, this is how my database plugin or database folder plugin pulls out everything is based on that metadata of what type, what status. And so it's not just supercharged links that, that those properties actually work with. It's all the other plugins in the ecosystem of plugins that I use to manage the metadata of all of my inputs, all my notes, etc. And then just like in my timeline note, this old this big data view query, it's you know pretty simple, just like this. And it shows me all of the notes that I processed, what stage of processing they are, what type they are. Like see, I did a lot of podcasts at this point in time. And this all culminates in having a timeline view of all of my inputs, what types, what stage of processing they are, and I can easily see at a glance things I might need to work through and just the history of what I've processed. So it's for fun, but also it is pretty useful for me. And that's pretty much how I have it set up. It's not too complicated, but I've gotten some questions about it. So hopefully that helps it make sense and you can set it up for yourself as well. If you're ever curious about like what my updated vault looks like, then support me on GitHub sponsors and you can get live access to anything that I'm working on as I make changes to it. And with that, I hope you enjoy the video and I'll catch you all in the next one.